Hi guys, I'm Smita and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about an amazing Python library. As machine learning engineers and data scientists, whenever we are working on projects, we are always on the lookout for some of the best libraries to incorporate into our projects in order to make data processing much faster and to make our projects work much more seamlessly. And Mito is a library which does just that. It allows much more faster data processing with Python and also it allows you guys to incorporate spreadsheets into your projects. The amazing thing about Mito is that it's extremely user friendly and it's great for beginners. Without further ado, Jake from Mito is going to demonstrate exactly how you can use this library. Let's get into it. Hey, this is Jake from Mito. I'm going to show you what Mito is all about and some interesting ways you can do analysis in Mito. So at a high level, Mito is a spreadsheet interface for Python. This allows us to generate Python syntax more quickly and work with our data in a more visual way. But it's all about doing your analysis faster and more efficiently. So I've imported the Mito sheet package and I'm going to call it MitoSheet.sheet. And here is our Mito front end. Before I dig into the tool more, let me just show you how you can install it. This is the Mito documentation page, which we'll link below. All you have to do is just make sure you have the right version of Python installed and then run these two commands, pip install Mito installer and then python m Mito installer install, and then just open JupyterLab and you'll be good to go. So again, I imported the Mito sheet package and I called Mito sheet.sheet. In terms of getting data into the tool, I could do one of two things. One, I can pass in a data frame I have already. The nice thing about this is you can call Mito into your analysis at any point, at any point in the notebook, not just right at the beginning. Or I can very easily access my local files and call them in. This is much better than having to deal with importing it yourself. You can just select the file you want, import. And I'm also going to select this one, import. Here's our two files. And below, when we did that import, it generated this code. And this is the code that's turning these two CSV files into data frames. So every edit we make in the sheet here is going to generate the equivalent Python below. The next thing I want to do, because both of these data sets have a zip code column, is I want to merge them together. So I'll click Merge. This is our merge model where we can join data sets together, something that can be um, difficult to do sometimes in Python just because you have to wrangle the syntax. You might have to go to the documentation. Here, you don't have to worry about any of that. We'll generate the syntax for you. All you have to do is select what your merge keys are going to be. That's the column you're joining on, what sheets they're coming from, and what columns you want to keep. This all looks good right now, so I'll close this. And we'll see we've generated our new merge data set here, our new merge data frame here. And I'll just rename this to merge. Oops. There we go. And again, we generated the code for that merge data frame. Now that I have my data set together, there's a few things I can do. The first thing I often want to do with a new data set is look at some summary statistics. And I can do that for any column. So we have these divisions here, for example. I can click here and go to summary stats. Here I can see some frequencies, which divisions are most common, which divisions are least common, and then some more summary statistics down here. I'll close that. Let's say I want to apply a filter, for example, another powerful thing we can do in Mito. I'll click this. I'll click Add Filter. We have these different divisions. Let's say I just want to look at the central divisions. So central, that live updates. Again, that, that filter is live updating the sheet. So it's editing the data frame. And below, we're generating the code for that filter. And we see central here. But if I were to change this to, let me take that filter off. And let's change this to southwest. So I'll have that filter again, but this time with southwest. Here we go, we now see the Southwest data, and below, that filter is gonna to change to Southwest. So this is live updating code that's accurately representing what we've done in the sheet here. I'm gonna take this filter off again. One thing I'll just point quickly here, two things we can do in this, in this menu as well, is we can change the data type of any column. Uh, dealing with data types can be you know, somewhat annoying in Python, so here we give you a really simple way to do that without having to write the code yourself. So you can change a string to a date time or a time delta. You can change an integer to a float or vice versa. So that's really powerful. And then we can also sort this data. So let me take this off. And we have these zip codes here. So these are numeric. So we can sort these in ascending. So now the data is in ascending order or descending order. And I can take it off and bring it back to the normal state. Let's say we want to do a pivot table, for example, to analyze the data a bit more. So I'll click pivot. We can decide what our data source is going to be for the pivot table. 
uh, we're gonna go with the merge data set. So I'll leave that as merged as our row. We'll put state. So an analysis, a question we might ask here with the pivot table is how many zip codes do I have for each state in this data set? So as my row, I'll put state. I can leave column blank because it's a pretty simple question. And then for value, I will put zip code. And these are all the different aggregation methods we have. So these are the ways we can group the data to sort of ask questions of it and see interesting patterns in the data. So we can use a sum, mean, median, min, max, count, standard deviation, or count unique. We're gonna go with count here. So we have the count of zip codes for each state in this data set. Here we go, we can see that value here. These are the different zip code values. So let's see if I wanted to see like a box plot to sort of show distribution of these of these zip code values. I could hit our graph button here and I hit box plot and then zip code. Here we go, here's a box plot showing us some important values in this zip code data in the pivot table. I'll close this and again when I scroll below we get the code for that pivot table. Two more things I want to show you, the first being we have here, so this code that we've generated, this is real code that we can run. So I'll run this cell hitting shift plus enter. And then if I print DF4 here, you see that we've actually generated that pivot table. So the edits we make in the miter sheet are real edits to the data frame that we can carry forward in the rest of our notebook. So DF4 is printed out as a data frame here, and you can call any data frame into Mito at any point. So if I were to call miter sheet dot sheet, here again with DF4, we would see a MITO sheet with our pivot table. So MITO is a really powerful tool for going back and forth between the MITO sheet and code as much as you want.